All right, disclaimer. This is a personal YouTube channel. Any views or opinions represented in this YouTube channel are personal and solely belong to me as the owner and do not represent those people, organizations, or institutions that I or may not be associated with in professional or personal capacity unless explicitly stated. Any views or opinions are not intended to malign any religion, ethnic group, club, organization, company, or any individual. So how can we secure an ECC? As, as you know, I already shared this to you, the revised procedural, procedural manual in which I am um, assuming that you already scanned through the DAO 30, um, 2003, um, in which the EIA process and all informations that you need with, an, with the EIA system or for, security, for securing an ECC is actually on that manual. So what is the EIA process in the Philippines? So this is an overview of the EIA process in the Philippines. Of course, we have the screening. Um, we have to check if the project is covered or not covered by the EIA system. So of course, the output is the checking list. And next, we have our scoping. So what are the most significant issues or impact of the project? And of course, the baseline information to be gathered. And the output is a signed scoping checklist. Um, and then we have the EIA study and report preparation. So the EIA study contains the outline in the procedure manual um, in which the output is the EIA report. And then the EIA report um, review and evaluation. So we will be submitting the EIA report to the EMB um, of course, um, review of AA report by EMB and AA review committee, in which the output is a review process report and draft decision document. And then, of course, next to that is the decision making, um, evaluation of draft decision document by endorsing and deciding authorities, in which the output is issuance of ECC, it's either um, CNC or denial letter. Um, CNC is Oh my gosh, I forgot. Uh, um, certificate of non C CNC non certificate non-compliance or denial letter. Um, am I right? Non-compliance. There is actually another letter that is given by DNR um, that that would say that would say that the project is not part or. Um, it's under the category four, uh, category D. I think it's part of my slides later, but I think since CNC is certificate of none or um, DNA or the denial letter, I think that's it. Okay, and then um, after that, the decision making, of course, the monitoring, validation, um, and evaluation audit. So, assessment of performance of proponent against the ECC and its component in DMP and MAOP, which is the output, is the monitoring and audit report. So after um, the EMB issued you an ECC, it doesn't end there, actually. They have to do uh, a monitoring and audit of the project. It actually depends on the, the EMB's decision as to how many times they are going to do the, the monitoring. They can do it, depends on them, depends on the project, actually. Um, they can do it uh, monthly, um, quarterly, once a year. It depends on their decision, in which actually that is being indicated in the ECC or CNC or denial letter. Um, in which um, this is um, the screening process based on the four categories. So we have category A, um, environmental critical projects, category B, uh, projects in environmental critical areas, C is environmental enhancement or direct uh, mitigation, and of course the category D means not covered um, by the it means there is no um there is no major impacts or this or or your project does not belong to the any categories and it has no um it 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 would not it would not render any um implicable impacts to the environment so 
um, category A, of course, we have to check. Uh, we have to screen if it's new or existing. If it's new, um, if it's new, so you have to screen if it's a single project. So therefore, you have to prepare an EIS. If it's co-located project, then therefore you have to prepare an PEIS. Um, if it's existing, um, you have to prepare a single project or EPRMP. If it's co-located, so when, when you say co-located, there is already an existing project. Uh, however, you will, be, um, you will be having the same project on another area. So that's why it's called as co-located project. Therefore, you have to prepare uh, PE, uh, PEPRMP. If it's under category B, which is projects in environmental critical areas, if it's new, uh, therefore, if it's new and it's a single project, you have to prepare EIS or IEEC. If it's co-located, then therefore, you have to prepare PEIS. If it's existing, if it's an existing project, if it's a single project, you have to prepare EPRMP. If it's co-located, then therefore you have to prepare uh, PEPRMP. If it's Project C, which is Environmental Enhancement or Direct Mitigation, if uh, it's a single project, you only have to prepare a project description. If it's co-located, then you have to prepare only project. Excuse me, project description. If it's category B, it's a category D, which is not covered. Um, you only have to prepare project description. So after the screening, um, you know now as to what category, as to what document to prepare. So next is you have to go um, to do the scoping. So public scoping, uh, this would actually involve stakeholders in host municipalities. And then technical scoping meeting, which is with the NRMB and the EAA review committee. And then after these two activities, you have to uh, sign a scoping checklist um, in which it actually termed as um, terms of reference of EIA in which relevant issues to be included in the EIA report. So this is the time in which um, the stakeholders will be posting or will be signifying or will be um, stating as to their issues with the project that you have. Um, it, this is actually very essential if the um, stakeholders will agree or will not agree with your project. Uh, because if they will not agree, then therefore um, the DNR EMB um, might give you an assessment of the scoping as to um, they will actually help you. You can actually do a second public scoping or you can do another, a third public scoping and the DNRMB and the AI review committee will actually, will, uh, will help you at some point as to how to, um, how to, I don't want to use attack, but I, how to strategize with your public scoping. So um, there are cases that public scoping might take a few, a few public scoping because the stakeholders will be laying out their problems and issues and then therefore you have to also lay out and lay down as to what will be the mitigating measures with their issues and concern. Um, yeah. So with the EA study and report preparation, um, this are, um, there are actually page limits. So for example, for EIS, 250 pages, PEIS, 350 pages, EPRMP, only 150 pages. Uh, PERMP um, is only like 200 uh, pages. IER 75 um, and PDR or the public description, which is basically 30 pages. So um, this is this um, this slide is actually very helpful for me, um, especially when I took my comprehensive exam. Uh, during my PhD. And this actually easily guides me as to what kind of document will I be preparing in a specific type of project. So for um, category one, which is Environmental Critical Project, new and co-located. So I have to prepare um, PEIS or Programmatic Environmental Impact Statement in which the processing or endorsement is by um, EMB, Director, and the direct deciding authority is 
of course, the DNR secretary and the maximum time frame is 180 days. Uh, 180 days is like six months. Um, next type of project is um, still in Rome Targeter project. Um, it's new and single project. So the one that I will be preparing is, or the one that is a requirement is an environmental impact statement or EIS. Of course, it has the same um, processing and endorsing, deciding authority, and the maximum time frame is 120 days. That is three, um, 12, four months, four months. Next is still category A, um, existing to be expanded. And it, if it is co-located, then therefore I have to prepare programmatic environmental performance report and management plan. Um, it's the same processing endorsing and the maximum time frame is four months. The same with operating without ECC, um, which is a co-located project. Talking about this now, um, this is actually a slap on my face and to our fa faces uh, because as far as I know, um, I, I, I'm not sure with this, but on my opinion and on my own knowledge, as far as I know, there is actually as actually no ECC. Um, given that we have a lot of buildings and it has been built way way back, like we are already approached more than a hundred years, and we actually don't have an ECC. And, and um, given that we can actually say like created way way back before the um, before the EAS system, we can say that sure. But we actually have new buildings. I don't know if you've been. Um, that for sure you've been there and I, I think you can also um, you can observe that we have few buildings um, sadly they those building has no ECC as far as I know because if there is an ECC um, definitely they have to put a tarpaulin with the ECC certificate number I know this I know about this because I think there there was an issue before because I went to the and so a lot of electronic waste and then it was a lot like it was a huge dump of electronic waste and she was um startled and amazed as to where did this electronic waste came from and then from that problem she started looking at documents that relates to and actually she was um she was lenient enough to be considerate and then from that certain um from that certain point, I think um, it was found out that there's no ECC um, even on its new buildings. Um, given that there are actually licensed environmental planner, um, I myself um, is knowledgeable enough with the EIA. And then how come? And we have also a few. We have also a lot of people that are knowledgeable on this and know how to prepare an EIA. But uh, yeah, that was the question in which how come? Um, you know, we are teaching EIA in some of the buildings per se, um, new projects, new buildings has no ECC. And, you know, it was, uh, yeah. <sighs> Anyhow, um, so we actually, those buildings actually belongs um, on this category, operating without ECC. And, uh, yeah. So on that certain case, um, Therefore, the document that has to be prepared is a programmatic environmental performance report and management plan. Of course, the same uh, processing and endorsement and deciding authority and would um, take at least four months for the um, ECC to be issued. Next is existing to be expanded, single project, or operating without ECC and a single project. So the requirement to that is environmental performance report and management plan, same processing and endorsing and same deciding authority, uh, which is the MB um, director or CO director. And the processing time is a maximum of three months. Next is a single new project, which is B1. Um, the required document is initial environmental examination or initial environmental examination checklist. So the processing on endorsing is the EMBCO or the EAA division chief. And of course, the deciding authority is the EMBCO director. 
So um, there's actually no maximum time frame to this because there are um, because it might only take like a few weeks in issuing an ECC. So um, the AI report preparers, um, these are actually 